Hey everyone, Charles Judd here, and in this video we're going to look at the 1.3c topic of EIGRP operations. Some of the things under here I've already taken a look at in previous videos for this blueprint section, such as the general operation of EIGRP, the topology table, and the different packet types. So here I'm going to focus on a couple of topics that we haven't explored just yet, which are the EIGRP stuck in active state and graceful shutdown. The stuck in active state can occur when an EIGRP process loses a route to a particular destination and is unable to find an acceptable alternate route, or in other words, a feasible successor. If we look at this sample topology, we have several routers interconnected, all participating in EIGRP. And on R1, we have a single route out to the 1.1.1.0 slash 24 network, and that is also participating in EIGRP. When a route is reachable via EIGRP, that route is in the passive state. So within a stable EIGRP network, all of our routes with valid successors are going to be passive. However, let's say our route on R1 going out to the 1.1.1.0 slash 24 network goes down. In this case, we would not have a feasible successor route because we have no redundant path to this network. So the route would change from passive to active. In the active state, the router starts sending out query messages to EIGRP neighbors. It does this in an attempt to find an alternate path to the route that was lost. When R2 and R3 receive these query messages, they reference their own EIGRP topology table. If they have information about how that route can be reached, then they would respond to R1 with this information and the new route would be installed and that route would once again become passive. If R2 or R3 do not have information about the route, which in this particular example they would not, they would query any of their EIGRP neighbors for information. Those query messages would go out of all of the EIGRP interfaces, except for where the original query message came from R1. This would continue until the query messages reach the edge of the network, and once the edge is reached, those edge routers will have no other neighbors to query, so they would send back a reply message. In this case, R4, 5, 6, and 7 would reply back to R2 and R3, which would in turn reply back to R1. If all of our replies reach R1 and no one has information about other paths for this route, then that route is removed. Or if there is an alternate path known, then the topology table would be updated on R1 with the new information learned from the replies that were received. The issue with stuck in active happens when we do not receive our replies in a timely manner. When EIGRP goes active for a route, our active timer starts, which by default is three minutes. If within three minutes we do not receive responses to all of these queries from all of the EIGRP neighbors, then EIGRP marks the route as being stuck in active, and it will reset the EIGRP neighbor for which no response has been received. Let's say for some reason, R4 wasn't able to get a reply back to R1 within this timer window. R1 would drop the neighbor adjacency it has with R2, and it would place the route in the stuck in active state. This means we would lose all of the routes that we learned from R2 as well. Lots of things can cause this situation where our replies don't make it back, such as network congestion or maybe just a really, really large network where we're sending our queries a long way. A mechanism introduced in iOS 12.15 and later to help avoid these unintentional termination events is the Active Process Enhancement feature. This introduced two new EIGRP packet types called SIA Query and SIA reply. I discussed these in the 1.3a EIGRP video covering EIGRP adjacencies. So if you're not familiar with those, you can go back and check out that video for more information. In cases where our reply gets lost or is delayed, when our active timer reaches the halfway point, which by default would be 90 seconds or a minute and a half, the original router that sent out the query message, which is R1 in this case, would send out an SIA query message. This essentially says, hey, I'm still waiting for a reply from you. If the SIA query is able to reach router two, then router two can respond with an SIA reply message. 
letting router one know that yes, I'm still working on this. I'm still waiting for a response to the query that I've sent out. This will reset the active timer to help ensure that the neighbor is not prematurely terminated. R2 would of course be doing the same thing as well, sending SIA query messages to R4 and waiting for responses to that. Let's look at this in a lab now. We have a simple topology with three interconnected routers, all participating in EIGRP, and each router has a loopback interface also participating in EIGRP. If we go to R1 and say show IP EIGRP topology, you can see the loopback interfaces for both R2 and R3 listed here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to enable debugging for EIGRP on all three routers so that we can have some visibility into what's happening. So I'm gonna say debug EIGRP packets. And if we look at contextual help, the optional keyword I'm going to add is terse. You can see that if we use this option, this is going to display all of our EIGRP packets except for our hello packets. So in this case, I don't want to see those because they're just simply going to fill up the debugging output. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this so that I can paste it into the other routers. So I'll turn that on on R1, R2, and R3. Now here on R3, let me go under my loopback zero interface, which is participating in EIGRP, and I'm gonna simply say shut down. So if I shut that down, I'm gonna jump over to R2, and if we look at our debug output, you can see that I've effectively taken that 3.3.3.0 network down. If we scroll to the top of this debug output, you can see we received a query message on gig zero slash one coming from 20.1.1.2, which is R3. So the route on R3 for the 3.3.3.0 network has gone active, and router three is looking for an alternate path. If we look further down in the debug messages, you can see that EIGRP has sent its own query message out on gig zero slash zero here on R2. That's sending it out towards R1. So R2 isn't aware of a route for the 3.3.3.0 network, and it's looking for a route from its neighbors. If we go to R1 and we look at the debug output here, you can see the query we received from 10.1.1.2, which is router two. Router one, of course, does not have an alternate path either that it's aware of. So we see that it sends back a reply message back to R2. And if we go back to R2, further down in the output, we can see where this reply was received from router one. Further down in the debug output on router two, we can see that we sent a reply over to neighbor 20.1.1.2, which is R3. So if we go to R3, we can see our reply that was received from R2, and we see some acknowledgement messages. And other than that, that's the end of our exchange. So if we say do show IP EIGRP topology, we of course are no longer seeing the 3.3.3.0 network in our EIGRP topology table. So this route when active, R3 queried the neighboring EIGRP router of router two, which in turn queried router one. Neither of those routers had any information about an alternate route. And so those update messages reached R3 successfully, which removed this route from the EIGRP topology table. So now let's try to simulate a stuck in active situation so that we can see that in the debug output. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my loopback interface back up. We'll see that adjacency reform here. So that all looks good. I'm going to Break out of here, I'm just gonna clear off some space in our console. We see the debug continuing on R2. I'll clear that off as well. And over on R1, we'll get all of that cleared off just so we have a clean slate to work with. Now, in order to simulate this, what I'm going to do is on the link between R1 and R2, I'm going to increase my hold timer. So I'm gonna go under interface gig zero slash zero here on R1, and I'm gonna say IP hold hyphen time EIGRP. Then we wanna indicate the autonomous system number, which is system number one, and followed by the number of seconds before the neighbor is considered down. So in this case, I'm just gonna set that to 300 seconds. That should give me plenty of time. By default, that value is going to be 15 seconds. 
So let's go to R2 and under interface gig zero slash zero IP hold hyphen time EIGRP autonomous system one 300 seconds. Let's break out of here and say show IP EIGRP neighbors. So now you can see our hold time is 300 seconds. So that's good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down the link between R1 and R2. And then once I do that, I'm going to again shut down the loopback interface on R3. So let's jump over to R1 and let's say shut to shut down this interface. Now this is not going to take down our adjacency from the perspective of router two. So on router three, let's go under interface loopback zero and we'll shut that down as well. We're gonna see those debug messages coming into our console. And so even though R2 is not able to communicate with R1, the adjacency is going to remain in place for five minutes because I've increased that hold time. This is going to allow us to mimic a situation where replies to our queries are not being received from a neighbor adjacency. And here on R2, you can see that over and over, we're sending query messages over to R1. Those continue to be sent. And that's because our neighbor adjacency, again, is still formed. And these are gonna continue just to roll through our console output, sending query after query. And eventually, remember that after half of our active timer expires, we're gonna start sending out stuck in active queries. So again, by default, our active timer is set to three minutes. So we should start seeing stuck in active queries after 90 seconds. So we'll just give this a bit of time to reach that 90 second threshold. And there we just had that happen. You can see that we're now sending a stuck in active query on gig zero slash zero over to router one. So if we go over to R3, you can see that we've received a stuck in active reply over here as well. So R2 and R3 are both using the stuck in active messages. Now, if we were to receive a stuck in active reply, which we have received from R3, this is going to reset our active timer and it's going to keep our adjacency alive. Now, of course, with the situation that we've created here between R2 and R1, we've severed that link. So that's not going to happen. Our timer is eventually going to expire and it's going to tear down our adjacency. If we say show IP EIGRP topology, you'll see that we have listed here stuck in active. So we see the debug message letting us know that we have had a lost peer. And the reason here we see our neighbor has gone down, which is the 10.1.1.1 neighbor router one, we see that it is listed as being stuck in active. So again, if we say show IP EIGRP topology, that is no longer available in there as well. So from the perspective of using debugging, that's exactly what a stuck in active state would look like. For the sake of time, I've gone ahead and reset the lab topology off screen. So let's finish this video by talking about EIGRP graceful shutdown. This is a feature that happens with EIGRP in the background that allows for faster convergence. If we have a router that stops running EIGRP on an interface or globally, the graceful shutdown feature advertises to all of the EIGRP neighbors that this router is being deactivated so that there's no need for any hold timers to expire before tearing down those adjacencies. This feature creates a hello packet with all of the K values set to 255. And that's sent out to all of the EIGRP neighbors in order to indicate there's a termination happening. Just so we can see that in action, let's take a look here on router two. We have the same topology for graceful shutdown initiation. Here on router two, if we go under global configuration mode, one of the ways we can initiate a graceful shutdown is by going under router EIGRP autonomous system number, which is one in this case, and currently I have a generic network statement advertising everything into EIGRP. So if I say no network, 0.0.0.0, .0 if I do that and then jump over to router one, you can see that we immediately receive a 
peer termination message. This means we have received a graceful shutdown message from R2, letting us know we should go ahead and converge immediately without waiting for any timers to expire. Let's go ahead and put that network statement back in place. Let that adjacency reform. And let's look at a different trigger for that, which is to remove the EIGRP process completely from the router. So if I back up into global configuration mode, I can say no router EIGRP one. I'll hit enter and back on router one. We again received a peer termination message for our graceful shutdown. Go back to R2. And I'll just put this back in place with my generic network statement. I'll let that adjacency reform. So that looks good. And another way we can do this is by saying clear IP EIGRP neighbors. We hit enter there and go to R1. Once again, we receive our peer termination message for the graceful shutdown. And of course, we did see that adjacency come right back up. And that's because this command is used to simply reset our EIGRP neighbor adjacencies on the router. Once again, just for the sake of time, I've reset the lab off screen. We have the same topology, but this time I've created an EIGRP named configuration. So let's explore a couple of graceful shutdown conditions with a named EIGRP. If we go on R2 and let's go under our named EIGRP instance, router EIGRP, I've named that lab in this case. And if we look at contextual help, the bottom option is for shutdown. This will allow us to shut down this EIGRP instance and perform a graceful shutdown. If I hit enter and jump to R1, we're gonna see our peer termination message as we've been seeing. We'll go back to R2 and say no shut to bring that back up and let our adjacency reform. Another option is to go under our address family configuration. So I'll say address family IP version four, autonomous hyphen system. I've configured autonomous system number one here I can hit enter, and from here, if you look at contextual help, we also have the shutdown option. This will shut down our address family. Let's do that, jump to router one. We're going to again see that peer termination received. We see that come into our console, and we can say no shut to bring that right back up, and we'll see that adjacency reform. One final thing, let's look at doing this for a specific address family interface. So we can say AF hyphen interface. In this case, I'll say gig zero slash zero, which is connecting out to R1. And then I can say shutdown. This is going to send a graceful shutdown message only to R1, which is connected over gig zero slash zero. Just to show that to you, let me clear off the consoles on R1 and R3. And if I hit enter here, you'll see on R1, we get our graceful shutdown message. On R3, our adjacency still remains. If we break out of here and say show IP, yeah, GRP neighbors, you can see we have a neighborship only with router three. So that's a look at some EIGRP operations, specifically taking a look at the stuck in active state and graceful shutdown. I hope you found this content useful and I wanna thank you sincerely for watching.